Hi everybody, this is John Watkins. If you're a fan of the TV show Gold Rush like I am, you've probably been fascinated by uh, gold dredges uh, operated by Tony Beats up in the Yukon. Well, in late August, Margaret and I were in Stanley, Idaho, and we had an opportunity to tour the Yankee Fork Gold Dredge, which is one of the best preserved gold dredges in the United States. Uh, this gold dredge operated from approximately 1940 to the early 1950s off and on uh, and uh, it's now located about 30 minutes outside of Stanley, Idaho. Uh, it's uh, really a cool thing to tour. It's open for touring uh, essentially in the summer on Saturday so if you want to visit it check to see if it's open although you could drive by it I think pretty much at any time. Anyway uh, come along with us and we'll, you sh we'll show you what we found. We are uh, on the way to the Yankee Forge Gold Dredge which we'll show you later but this road which is north of Stanley is just spectacular. You can see the uh, Here's the highway. These just amazing rock formations. And it's just all along the road. And then if you uh, walk over here quickly with the truck approaching to the other side, you see there's this uh, just beautiful Flowing Creek along the uh, parallels the road. It, these uh, last days of August, you also have some of these wildflowers. Just really a pretty cool place, right off the road. So this is the outside of the gold dredge which is really quite a big, it's really kind of a boat. It floats and processes gold and it's open. And you can uh, tour it for $5 per adult. And if you're seniors with a senior park pass, you get 50% off, which we did. It's $5 even at full price, well spent. And this is the uh, gold dredge. We're coming up to the entrance where we're going to buy our tickets and tour the dredge. We've done this once before, but it's very interesting. And this is the uh, winch room. You can see some of the incredible machinery they used on this gold dredge and we were just talking to a young lady who told us about how difficult it was to bring this material up to uh, you know this remote area in the 40s well, think about that and this is the uh, motor control room where you can see the relays pretty primitive looking by today's standards but they worked this is the control room, and uh, what's your name? Bill. Bill. Uh, his family was involved, it, it owns a trucking company, they trucked a lot of the materials up here to build the dredge, and uh, was he'll, he'll tell you if you visit here just an amazing amount of information about the dredge and the history, and he's right at the controls, this is where they would have operated it. It would have, uh, the ore would have come up on the, the buckets that you can see out here over the booms and then it would go uh, into the trommel and get washed and uh, processed and the uh, tailings would go out one side and the gold they caught would be processed into bars. Pretty interesting. Then this is the uh, top view, open view of the trommel where the, uh, the ore would go through, it would get tumbled and washed. And 
you may have seen trommels like this on uh, gold rush or other gold mining shows. This is a big one. And here's the front where the, uh, you can see the machinery that would be involved in turning the trommel. It's uh, rusted, but probably could still work today if it were fixed up a little bit. This is one of the two Ingersoll Rand diesel engines that were used to power the dredge. And here's another one. You can see these are big. They each used, uh, according to the sign, 300 gallons of diesel fuel a day. So, you know, produced a lot of energy, used a lot of fuel. This is a uh, retort furnace. According to the sign there, it was located uh, about four miles away, and that's where they would process the amalgam uh, mixture of mercury, gold, and silver in a crucible and separate the uh, valuable metals out. We also have a little, uh, here in the dredge, a mini museum. It's got a lot of information and photographs and documents about the history of the, uh, the dredge. These are piles of tailings that were left by the gold dredge. So, you know, there are environmental consequences to everything and there's a vehicle. Back in the day, they didn't have uh, regulations about uh, reclaiming the land. Just these piles of rock. So there you have it. It's a really fascinating piece of history, mining history, and uh, it's so well preserved. If you're in the Stanley area, it is certainly worth a trip, a short trip to see the dredge. The drive out is also beautiful. Check with us next time. We'll see you soon.